Got someone I want you to meet. Newest member of the household currently. This is the, uh, we don't have a real name for him, but the working name based off of his racing name is Diablo and he's our new foster. Can you say hi? He's a very, very sweet boy. Very sensitive, sweet boy. Yeah? He really likes pets. He like leans into the pets. Yeah, we got a boy gray. Yeah, he's got very sweet and sensitive eyes. He's a gentle giant. Does he like the Sims? Do you like the Sims? He doesn't know. He's a big boy. He's tall. He's still in racing shape though. All right? He's gonna hang with us today in the, in the stream room. So I'll tell you a little bit about him. Uh, he came off the track this Saturday morning and he was, uh, there was just a little, a small group of greys that we got and he was one of them. He's five. His birthday was, uh, in October, so we, we had a little delayed birthday party for him when, when he got home. Um, he had 200 races and won 24 of them. And his racing name was HBW Diablo. Uh, Libra, I don't know, is the 13th Libra? Yeah, Libra. Yeah, they just sent us kind of, they didn't really give us a new name, so we were considering maybe thinking of a new name. Um, so we don't, Jenna doesn't like calling him Diablo. <laughs> she thinks it's too demonic. Um, so, but he's very funny. He like, um, he, he doesn't kind of, he doesn't like fully understand how to walk. Well, so he's really good at like walking. He's really good on a leash. He heals perfectly. He's like very good on a leash. Almost strangely good on walks. Uh, but when you're like in the house and he's in your way, he doesn't understand the concept of him, his body blocking. So he'll just kind of, he'll just kind of like block entrances and just not move and like not understand why. So we were thinking of calling him Putty because there's that Seinfeld episode where Putty is, uh, is painting his face to go to the devil's game. And then he has his face painted like a devil. And then he gives that pastor like a heart attack. Cause he's like the devil. Um, we don't know though. I wanted to get some, you know, maybe some ideas from chat if you had any, but yeah, that's um, that's our new foster and he'll be hanging around here for a little while till we get him home. I've been calling him Diablito, but um, we still, yeah, we still, I don't know, we might change it. It's it's honestly just, just something to call him while he's here because there's always a good chance that uh, his adopters rename him. Yeah, placeholder name, exactly. Dio's cute. May or may not have set up a little camera so you can get a good look at him. Little foster cam. But yeah, so he's getting along really well with the other Greyhounds. Um, he and Lonnie have done a few zoomies. Bunny, I think, really likes him. I think Bunny might have a crush on him. 60 month anniversary. Let's go. Nice and um, be with you all and thank you, Julian, for No, he fits right in. He's 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 doing, he's doing incredibly. Family Orange Heart. He's doing incredibly. He's great on a leash. He learned the stairs very quick. He under he understands uh, that we that we like to chill. And he's getting the hang of the routine very, very nicely. Look at that precious baby, Mr. Man. No, stop what you're doing and look at him. Precious little guy. Bunny gonna riz him up? I, I don't, don't know if Bunny has riz. You, but I think another horse has infiltrated your household. <laughs> Thank you for the warning. No one's been afraid of the stream room so far. No, they don't mind the stream room. Only don't Bunny. Don't be alarmed, but Terry's a cow in your room right now. Love this new baby. Yeah, he's a sweet boy. He's got very long legs. Yeah, he's tall. He's our tallest greyhound. Yeah, so his track name was was Diablo. That's what they called him. I would say I would say he's a, he was a veteran racer. He raced for, for a while, but all good. since 2020. All of you beautiful dinks. So th Thank almost three full years well. of racing. Two and a half full years. Oh seven. Two and a half full. That makes sense. Yeah, like he started early 2020. He raced at a few tracks in the States and then he finished his career in Mexico and he was taken off the track this Saturday when we processed and took him home. So yeah, he's been he's been working hard. Now he gets to retire and too. I'll show you a few pictures from homecoming. I gave him his first walk. He was like incredible on, on, on the leash. Like it's not a bad thing um, to have a Greyhound pull on their first walk because that's all they really know how to do. But he didn't pull at all. This is when I, this is when I was, um, given, given the news that he was going to be my foster. And then this is him on our first walk. Look at him healing. Muzzle looks like a croc. Muzzles do look like crocs, actually. Kind of looks like me. Well, he's pretty handsome, so. Not our first male gray, no, we've had two. Has he done the stairs? Yeah, he's done the stairs a bunch of times. Um, 
He did them first Saturday night and then Sunday morning. And then um, again yesterday. And today he did them a few times. He's he's gotten really good at the stairs. Oh my God. So he he stands like a ballerina. It's actually so cute. He stands with his with his feet pointed outward. And it's so cute. I haven't gotten like a full body picture of him yet. But I have a picture of his of his legs. And it's, I don't know why he stands like this. But it's adorable. Here. <laughs> Look at this picture. This is how he stands. He just has his feet like pointed outward. So he'll just like stand like that. And it looks adorable. He's so delicate. First position king. Yeah. Yeah. He's laying away from the camera. I kind of want to move him. You want to lay the other way? All right, I'm gonna move him. Time to move. Time to move. Okay. We need it for the angle. You want some itches? Ding clubby. Itchy boy, huh? So this has been uh, kind of everything I did this whole weekend. Greyhound stuff. It was a Greyhound weekend. He's jacked. Yeah, he's in racing shape. Yeah, it was a good weekend. Not not a ton of sleep, but a good weekend. What's it like getting the foster pups used to your home? It's usually pretty smooth. They're like all so wonderful. Their temperament is uh, like always so good. It is massively helpful, like I always say, to have our greyhounds here to kind of show them the ropes because greyhounds with other greyhounds, just they always mesh really well. Um, but we'll usually let him meet the greys first and then kind of give him a tour of the place so you can, you know, see what's, what's going on, see all the rooms, sniff things, understand the space a little bit, show him a mirror, show him a glass door. Um, show him the backyard, show him the pool. And, you know, then he meets the littles and then eventually it's time to settle because by the time we've gotten home, it's been a really long day for him and me, but mostly the Greyhound. Happy Monday, they were up super early in the morning, Welcome, getting loaded into a van, club. crossing the border, and then up all day getting processed at homecoming. So it, by the time they like get home and they're over the excitement of being in a new place, it's time to settle. So we try to, you know, give them a chance to get like cozy on the floor and on a blanket or whatever and get a, a nice nap in and that gives us a chance to kind of like chill for a minute and then um the first night is usually always pretty um you know it varies it's like sometimes the greyhound will, about fostering? will be really uh self-sufficient on night one and have no anxiety and sometimes a, a dog will pace and struggle with being in a new place at night for the for most of the night and then we'll get up and um most of the track dogs we get will wake up super early because they're on uh, they're on their track track schedule, which is they wake up really early. So um, he was pretty good though. He settled pretty quick. He liked being in the crate. In our in our bedroom, we have a bunch of uh, we have a bunch of dog beds, so they can like choose. And um, oh, did he roll over? Oh my god, he's so cute. Yeah, so they'll find their spot, hopefully settle, and then. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, that was, that's kind of the process, you know? And then we wake up. It's super important that like, we don't um, let him dictate the time that he gets up. Cause if he wakes up 5 a.m. saying like, all right, this is when I'm used to getting up and we go with it. We're telling him like, okay, he's the one who sets the schedule. So we want him to get used to our schedule and our routine. Cause that's what being, you know, a dog in a home is like. So we try our best on, on morning number one to like snooze a little bit. And he was really good about that. He got up and paced a little bit, but um, he didn't wake us up fully at five. He went back to sleep for a little bit and then take him for a walk. It's all very like routine heavy. We want them to get super used to expecting the same thing every single day because that helps them adjust to a home. He loves that blanket. Yeah, that's our blanket. Yeah. Yeah. The way he has his legs up in the air, that's sort of, it's like a version of roaching and we don't, sometimes we don't see any of our our foster roach for the entire time where we have them. And sometimes they'll roach on night one. So some dogs do it, some dogs don't. Like Lonnie pretty much did it on night one and Bunny still hasn't. <laughs> so is it ever difficult when they get to their permanent home to unlearn your routines and get readjusted? We don't really see that process as much cause you know, he's gone. But um, no, I think if you have people who are patient and willing and loving, it's that process is easier than 
the track to their first home. I am happy, yeah, I seem happy because I am happy. Greyhounds make me happy. I like spending time with them and helping them. Yeah, roaching is when a greyhound or a dog will lay completely on their back and their legs go straight up in the air. Man's is retired. It is retirement time. Time to chill, my dude. Yeah, I actually knew he was gonna be pretty chill the moment I saw him because when he pulled up in the van, usually the van is like, as it's pulling up to homecoming, all the hounds are standing with their muzzles against the window and you can just hear the plastic sound of their muzzles like hitting the window over and over and they're all just very excited. And I looked in, cause I only saw two. And I looked in, I was like, is, I thought there were three and homie's sleeping on the, on the floor of the van, even when they're pulling up, just laying down, didn't care. So I was like, oh yeah, he's gonna be chill. Is there ever a goal to recover them from racing shape? 100%, yeah, it's, uh, you know, you don't wanna rush anything, but like over the, over the month or two that you have him as a foster, just feeding them a regular appropriate diet is gonna, you know, bring them up a few pounds and get them to a more comfortable, sustainable weight. Not so much like a performance weight, but more of just like a living weight. Why do you wanna change his name? Um, just saying Diablo isn't like, Jenna's favorite. So we're gonna we're gonna try to think of a name like a placeholder name that we can Hi call friends. him that he can at least sort Time of understand. Friend. I kind of like Putty, but yeah, we're I don't know. We'll see. Just start saying name ideas and see which one he replies to. He's not gonna reply to any of them because he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't know his name. Diablo. 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 You kind of get you kind of get our reasoning though. Us just saying that over and over all day. <laughs> it's like may not be the vibe. He's also just like such an angel. He couldn't be more opposite of the Diablo. I, oh my God, I, I, I'm at homecoming um, and I usually text like updates to Jenna and stuff when she's not there or whatever. And so I, I literally texted her uh, when I knew Diablo was the Greyhound we were taking home. I texted her, I was like, all right, I sent a picture and I wrote Diablo exclamation mark. And I'm like, all right, then I'm busy, I'm doing stuff. And then like 10 minutes later, I look at my phone and she's like texting me a bunch. And the, the picture didn't send. So out of out of nowhere, <laughs> I just texted her, Diablo. <laughs> she was like, okay. And then <laughs> she was like, this. <laughs> oh man. Nacho, because of Nacho Libre, because he's a Libra. That's, you're gonna pull a muscle reaching. But I actually like the name Nacho because of my dude Nacho from BCS, Michael Mando. He, um, this dog raced for a living, chat. Runs 45 miles an hour. Yes, he's jacked. Yes, yes. There's like no body fat. But we're gonna put some weight on him, make him a little more comfy. He don't need to be like that. He's retired now. Not our first male foster, no. Second male foster. Fast doggo go so fast. You could name him Alexis after I face him. Oh yeah, just name him your name. What about Bang <laughs> for Bang Chen? Ayo, Sammy. My dude knows. The only the only bad part is Congrats he's a foster. <laughs> he's got to go at some point. Elote, that's a cute name too. Diablo. Oh, hi. I think he just heard me speak. He just heard my voice. It wasn't the name. Bang Chen. Oh. Yeah. He's looking at you, chat. Nacho. He's thinking about it. What if he did a poll, and then if I didn't like the results of the poll, I just ignored it. Nacho is actually my favorite so far. I like Nacho because it's like, it's just really cute and it seems somewhat on, on theme. I don't know why, maybe because we were talking about Diablo sauce. Nacho, you can totally be a Nacho. Did we just come up, did, did we just come up with a new name chat? New, new Greyhound name just dropped? You itchy boy. Want some switches? Just want you to know I just finished cleaning my whole house and sat down to drink a glass of wine and then my dog started chasing a fly that ended up landing on the hand that the wine was in and now there's wine everywhere. Happy Monday. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Nacho ain't his name? Hey, um, Otter, unfortunately, it is not up to you. Not even close. They're fighting a losing battle here. How tall do you think he is if he stood up? Oh, like on his two feet, standing up? Uh, taller than my grandma. My grandma's hella short. I measured it once. She was over at my house and I stood Bunny up and Bunny was taller than her. My grandma's hella short. What's her name? Grandma. What do you mean, what's her name? It's grandma, man. You don't need her name. MJ, not Gram Cam. 
Not Graham Cam on Monday. On Monday in November. Graham Cam. No. What's he looking at? I don't know. He's just doing Greyhound stuff. Sometimes they sleep with their eyes open. Yeah, he's looking at his own business. <laughs> yeah. Any advice on someone who's looking to adopt a Greyhound? Educate yourself on the breed. Do some reading. There's some resources on Graysave's website that I would encourage you to check out. There's some good literature there. Um, just understanding why their breed is different than others and what's important to know before potentially fostering or adopting. My neighbor has a huge Great Dane that jumps on a trampoline. <laughs> Like a huge, like a like a full size trampoline, like one of those little ones. Are they high energy dogs? Greyhounds are very okay. Greyhound education time. Greyhounds are low energy dogs. Okay, apart from being a puppy or in the middle currently of a race, they're not high energy. They don't need a lot of exercise. You don't need to run them. In fact, they don't like runs. They like a they like a good walk and they like laying on the couch. They're the fastest couch potatoes in the world. They'll sleep 12, 15 hours if you let them at a time on the couch. They get zoomies, they'll run for 25 seconds, maybe a minute, maybe two if they're young. And then they'll be like, all right, time to sleep for 12 hours. People think that adopting or fostering a greyhound, they're like, oh man, I gotta change my lifestyle. Man, I gotta become a runner. No, your running isn't running to them. It wouldn't entertain them. It would just be uncomfortable. They like walking and like the occasional zoomie if, if you have a yard. If not, no big deal. They're retired racers, so they're not looking to do a ton of stuff. And even when they're active racers, they're not racing all day every day. You know what I mean? They're short bursts and then they rest. Yes, their zoomies are extra fast, but they're, they're very brief. Do your dogs like swimming? Depends on the Greyhound. One of our friends' Greyhounds will run th straight through our back door into our pool if we let her. And some some of them don't care for the pool. Why do people race greyhounds? That's not part of my job. My job is just to help them. Uh, Nacho seems to have been approved by the household. Yes, we've gotten confirmation chat. Nacho is a go. Green just light. Got two kittens and they have the zoomies twenty four seven. Yeah, can't speak to that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't lo notice Lonnie until she just moved. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's void dog. Speaking, uh, do they have much Yo, of a prey Nacho drive? Ray, where you at? Being low energy in your experience, I've thought about adopting, but I have birds. Okay, great question, Amanda. Yes, all greyhounds that yes, come from a track free. have prey drive. In fact, all greyhounds have prey drive. It's in their DNA. They're sight hounds. And the ones that race are sort of taught and encouraged to harness that prey drive to run. Uh, so they chase a lure around a track, hoping to get the lure, and that's what makes them win races. So prey drive is a spectrum. Some dogs will have such high prey drive that they can never be around cats and little dogs ever, safely, ever. Post their racing career, retirement, whenever, they're not safe to be around little dogs and cats because they will try to get it. Most of the time they will be able to. And that's not super rare, but it's also not super common. And then there's the other side of the spectrum where, there, where Lonnie exists, where she has prey drive, um, but doesn't really care about little dogs and cats. That's not to say though that Lonnie couldn't be around like a bird maybe or a kitten and not want to get it because both of those things have happened. Like she hasn't gotten a kitten, but when Mr. Phil was here, we observed Lonnie wanting to get Mr. Phil and that is just, it's a no-no, so right? So we moved Lonnie to Graycation for the time that he was here and we kept them separate for the days that they were here together. Um, I would say birds are like, you might have a hard time finding a greyhound that's cool with birds, but it, they exist. You just might have a hard time. Cause even dogs that are small dog safe and cat safe may not be bird safe. They might look at a bird as a snack always. It's like the smaller they are, the more chance that prey drive is gonna take over. Like squirrels, birds, pretty common for a greyhound to wanna get both of those things. I was long winded, but yeah. Greyhounds have prey drive, it just, it can be in different amounts and manifest in different ways. Marbles is great, he's such a champ. He's been so good with the Fosters. How common are the blood donor greys like Bunny? Um, it's complicated. Um, Sweet titles. It's, it's complicated, I, I mean, uh, Happy 43 the legality of it is complicated right now. It was sort of outlawed because um, California was the last state to allow that and it was, it's complicated. But basically when it was up and running, the colony style blood donation facilities for greyhounds, it would be retired slash injured and retired racers or racers who weren't good and never really made it on the track. Marbles is still the leader. Yeah, he still runs the show. Yeah, Greyhounds have universal dog blood. So their blood was and is used um, in certain settings for donation purposes. For some happy facts about blood donation, you can have your dog be a voluntary donor at your local emergency vet. I didn't know that. Interesting, that's cool. I don't think my little Layla 
Chihuahua would do well with any foster dog socks. I would love to get involved with that. Well, we are, uh, we are ch Chihuahua people. We have a Chihuahua and we foster greyhounds. It just takes a little bit more care and, uh, attention sometimes, but we, it's, do it's doable. There are small dog safe greyhounds. Marbles will quite literally, Lonnie sleeps in our bed most nights these days and Lonnie, did I say Lonnie? Lonnie sleeps in our bed most nights these days and Marbles will literally cuddle up with her. Like that's a sight I was not prepared ever to see in my whole life. And it happens basically every night. You have a picture you feel comfortable sharing? There's a picture of me and Lonnie in bed. I'm like dead asleep. <laughs> Lonnie looks like a woman. She looks like a human. That's what she does every night. She sleeps under the covers. That's a, that's a human, man. Hell yeah, I'm the little spoon, dude. If you could ever get spooned by a greyhound, you better take that opportunity. It's amazing. Congrats on your roommate. And they were roommates. Every night we say that to Lonnie. Lonnie is different. That dog is special. Marble looked like a grain of rice next to her. <laughs> yeah. Where's Marble? Oh, I didn't see him behind that grain of rice. Do you ever think about how many dogs watch your stream with chat? Hey, if you're a dog, type two right now. Type two in chat if you're a dog. Where my dogs at? Damn, hella dogs in chat. Urgh, rough. They'll know what it means. My dogs know. Do you have a least favorite dog breed? It's a loaded question. I work at a vet hospital. The answer is Shiba Inu. <laughs> Bro, no hesitation. They scream. Don't um huskies do a lot of screaming too? I don't have a least favorite dog breed. I have a least favorite dog owner type that makes any dog breed like horrible. But it's always the owner. You know what I mean? I mean, most of the time. Every dog, you know, we're not gonna get into it. People suck though. Are Chihuahuas your least favorite dog breed? Not even close, dude. Once once a Chihuahua warms up to you, once you earn their affection, that is the good shit right there. They have rough exteriors. But when you, when you get that love back, finally, that's nice. Make gruel for Aries Kitchen. <sighs> like I could do it and it's a funny meme, but like then I'd just have a pot of gruel in my house. Do retired greyhounds receive a pension and retirement plan? No, they don't. Their retirement plan is getting put into a home that loves them. I'm their 401k. Yeah, I'm in charge of giving them their 401k, just like all my villagers. Mm -hmm.